Uh, hello, everyone. Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So it's November 15th, 2020. Let me know if you hear me well. Uh, just let me know as well if you, if you see the room a bit brighter. Uh, I got a new light uh, for the live streams because I usually do them at night. Let me know if it looks better. Uh, great to see uh, already quite a few people here, 62 or 56 now, 44 thumbs up. Uh, Pablo Pina says, good day, you look very lumen. Okay. <laughs> uh, I still need to work out how to adjust it properly. Hi, Padenda. Nice to see you here. I saw some people talking about cryptocurrencies. Uh, the, someone put one of my videos on YouTube uh, about the rule of law. I think that was from October. Yeah, I really think there's a problem here uh, politically in the U.S. Uh, the, uh, the title of the live stream, of course, is about central banks, that they want to uh, own everything. They want to control you. I want to talk as well about... Uh, digital uh, currencies, central bank digital currencies. I think they're completely different uh, than cryptocurrencies. I don't think, uh, from what I've read today, I think the central banks really, uh, they're trying something else. I think the cryptocurrency space, they're getting too excited about central banks uh, really getting involved in cryptocurrencies. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Helton Ernesto, uh, when when I he says Katrastoffen Hauser, well, that is the hyperinflation. Uh, it's difficult to tell. Uh, I think we're getting closer and closer. And we've uh, never had the ingredients, uh, all the ingredients all at once uh, in the West, uh, at least, well, at least since 1923 in Germany in an advanced industrial society. Uh, Billy is napping. Yeah, he is. Um, so, uh, I'll wait for a few more people to come in. I I'll say hello to everyone. Uh, Mark from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I might miss a few of you guys. Uh, we've got Tricky Dicky. Thank you for the super chat. Furlough extended until March. Yeah. Boris is done. More QE. Uh, what are they playing on top of that? Brexit is ridiculous. Yeah. It looks like they're going to delay the negotiations for Brexit again. So here we are, four years after the referendum, when we're still part of, part of the EU, technically. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, Padenda, I said Heinz Padenda, John Turtle, Isaac Greenough, tried, trusted and true gold and silver physical. Yeah, I've even got my uh, mug today. It says only physical gold and silver will slay the bullion banks. We got David and Goliath here. You can get that in the Teespring store. It's just water uh, to clear my throat. Gold, silver, and crypto need to be in everybody's portfolio. LB Crypto says. I think so. I mean, I, I think crypto's... Uh, People need to do a lot of uh, homework about cryptos. Gold and silver is easier. You know, you just buy a, a coin, you have gold, silver, jewelry. That, that's very easy. But cryptocurrencies is harder. It's not for the uh, widows and orphans, I don't think, because of the volatility. It's very uh, unstable. It's not a very stable store of value, uh, uh, like precious metals, I would say. I favor uh, precious metals, of course. Doesn't mean to say I don't agree with LB Crypto. Uh, Gary Hughes from California, DX398 from Toronto. Klaus Schwab. Well, Greg Keating, uh, just check out, uh, just Google World Economic Forum, Fourth Reset, Fourth Industrial Revolution, and you'll find out who while Schwab is. He's not a good character, in my opinion. So um, I read an article uh, over the weekend in the Telegraph talking about how the Bank of England 
is considering a digital currency. But the only reason they're considering this, because right now we need to understand the, the difference between uh, reserves and money, right? Uh, circulating money. So the central banks, when they do QE, they create reserves. Uh, with these reserves, uh, they will go and buy uh, bonds, uh, you know, uh, gilts, treasuries. Let's say let's include the Fed in this. They'll buy government bonds. They'll go buy mortgage-backed securities. That will go into their assets, and then the reserves uh, will flow into the banks uh, and the financial institutions uh, from which they buy these reserves. And, and the banks will hold these uh, reserves either uh, through digital entries or through paper uh, uh, notes. Some banks hold fiat currency paper notes. So that's how it works now. And, and I think the central banks are worried that uh, these reserves that have flown into the uh, banking system or even uh, you know digital or paper, they're not flowing into the real economy. They're, straight, they're staying in the financial markets. They're not going into uh, the consumer. And I, I also think that the central banks are concerned uh, with the economies locking down again. They're concerned there will be a collapse of the banks. And why is that? Well, because banks, uh, when you put your money in the bank, uh, it becomes uh, uh, that you know the bank takes that uh, and uh, they uh, lend that, and that becomes uh, you know what, your money in the bank is a liability liability for them. But then they will go and uh, leverage that liability and buy assets to cover that. And if the economy collapses, like it looks like it's collapsing in my opinion, uh, you could see the banks in trouble and they wouldn't be able to uh, <laughs> provide liquidity to the public. And I think that's what the central banks are scared of, that there will be a collapse of the banking system. And that's why I think you should also think uh, very uh, hard if you have too much uh, savings in the bank uh, over the uh, insured amount, the uh, F F FCSC in the UK, which is 85,000 pounds, or FDIC in the US, which is 250,000 pounds. So what I think the central banks want to do is be able to eventually create these uh, reserves uh, and then uh, pump it directly to you and I. So how would they do that? Well, they'd have to create a digital uh, system. They wouldn't post... Uh, Bank of England notes in, in, the, in the mail. They could, though. Uh, and uh, so they would have to work out some kind of digital system. And, and they say in the article that it could be, uh, it doesn't have to be cryptocurrency. They could use uh, PayPal. Uh, they could use uh, MasterCard. Anything that will connect their systems to you uh, and, and they could use people's national insurance number or social security number and deposit uh, basically central bank reserves uh, to an app uh, directly to you, bypassing uh, the banking system. I think that's what it's all about. I, 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 and I don't think they, they want to, uh, you know, some people think that these central banks are going to buy Bitcoin or uh, Ripple to back these digital currencies. No, from what I've read, and, and I also read something from, um, actually it's called bankunderground.co.uk. These are economists from the Bank of England, and they wrote three and a half years ago about this, exactly about this. And uh, they're still saying that the, the, the thing that will probably back this digital currency that they would send directly to us would probably be uh, zero or perpetual bonds issued by the government, which they would buy, and that would be the asset that would back this liability that uh, they uh, send to us. It would be an asset for us, a liability to them, but they always have to work with their balance sheet um, because, uh, yeah, that's how they make it. Uh, you know, if they issue liabilities to us through these digital currencies, they have to back it by an asset. That's how the balance sheet works. 
And uh, I, I don't think it's a good thing. It, it, it's not, you know, unless they back back this by gold or something real, it's going to be more and more paper, uh, like these perpetual guilts. That's what they're thinking about. There's no talk in there about backing this, these digital currencies with cryptocurrencies or even using the blockchain uh, to, uh, to send uh, these funds to the public. So I think uh, I'm not saying that cryptocurrencies aren't any good, but I don't think people should think that uh, central banks are interested too much in cryptocurrencies. I think if anything, they're interested in competing with them, but I don't think they're gonna use them uh, to back their digital currency. So that's what I wanted to tell people. Uh, hopefully you understood that and I'll, I'll look at your questions now. I see Mr. Guppy says the stock market, at least in the US is showing clear signs of hyperinflation. I agree, I agree. People uh, are losing faith and confidence in governments. They're losing faith and confidence in the currency. So they have a few choices. They buy real businesses. Um, you know, the, the stock market did very well during Weimar Germany uh, in the hyperinflation. Uh, but you need to be careful which companies you buy. I don't think you want to buy financial companies, insurance companies, uh, anything that's involved in that. But you have to be aware that the currency is uh, going uh, south. So... If you're an investor, because really gold and silver are money, uh, they're real savings, you hold them. Uh, but if you're clever enough to know which companies to buy, I, I, I don't think it's a problem. Uh, they will survive the hyperinflation. I would fix on comp, I would be uh, probably look at companies that have real assets. And that's why I have mining stocks because I think they're still heavily under, undervalued. I think companies involved in uh, general commodities are good as well. Magic Torch, thank you for sharing your wisdom. What portion of the population do you think know there is something wrong with the money system? <laughs> uh, I would say 5% or less. I, don't, I wouldn't say more than 5%. because I would say most people don't really understand what money is, unfortunately. Not because it's complicated, just because it's something academia, schools, universities always avoid really talking about. They always say it's complicated, it's not really clear, but it's very clear what money is. Money is just a, a representation uh, of your efforts, of wealth, and uh, you just have to go uh, do uh, the uh, regression analysis of uh, the Austrian school, go back to a more of a, how can I say, a, uh, a society that hasn't evolved, uh, where you have uh, no money, where you have barter, and then people realize that there are some commodities that are the most marketable, which means that most people want, and those become money, and uh, it evolved from that, right? A lot of people don't know that, uh, and uh, that's what I'm trying to do here, uh, inform people about what money is. So, because if you don't really know what money is, you won't understand that the system is uh, broken, really. Uh, Mr. Guppy, I've talked a lot about casting. Can you get into that? in the UK, have you checked into it? No, I haven't, Mr. Guppy. Uh, I know you said that uh, you can avoid confiscation with, uh, with uh, this kind of uh, casting grain, which is uh, gold and silver used for jewelry making. Um, in the UK, uh, yeah, there's, well, you can probably get that here, but I, I've never really been interested, been interested in that. I think you probably have a, a point there and having casting uh, grain, uh, gold and silver, to maybe avoid confiscation. Uh, one thing I would say though, um, it probably will be harder for you to exchange that uh, with normal people out there because they won't really know, they won't be sure. So uh, coin, coins of the realm, I think are the best. Yeah, I know they're liable to confiscation, but um, everything is these days. 
Hi, MM No, nice to see you. Uh, Helsinki, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Question, uranium mining stocks in the possible coming bull market. Can you please share your thoughts? Uh, uranium, I, I haven't really been, been following it too much, but uh, I know one stock I had years ago called Cameco. So, but um, I think it, if commodities do well, I think uranium could do, do well as well. That's just a thought, but I haven't really, I don't really follow the uranium market. Uh, Pat, I did see uh, Martin Armstrong's in, uh, interview uh, with Greg Hunter. Well, he didn't say anything uh, different uh, than I, I've been telling people since June about the World Economic Forum and what's going on. They want to bring about uh, world di dictatorship. Yeah. Joey A, gold mining swaps. Uh, digital, digital, John Turtle says, what about digital gold? Well, you know, Glint, uh, which is a firm that I have a, like a referral code with, uh, that's digital gold. And uh, here in Europe, uh, I don't think they brought the, uh, the service to the U.S. Uh, uh, yet. It's a P2P. There's a peer-to-peer -peer function now where you can send gold as, as, as fast as a text to someone else who has a Glint card or a Glint app. So Glint is yeah, digital gold. They store the physical gold in Zurich, Switzerland, and they give you a MasterCard. And now you can send gold instantaneously, quicker than you can send Bitcoin to anyone, to someone else. So physical gold. As I've said, I have a Glint card. And uh, I think it's a, a great uh, tool. But personally, I prefer physical gold. Uh, the referral code, if anyone is interested in the Glint app, is Mario Glint 79. Uh, I'm not sure when the peer to peer is coming to the US. I think they had some kind of uh, compliance uh, question. I think so. Uh, we have to check with them uh, when that's going to happen. Uh, Leslie Wainwright, uh, Deutsche Bank, 1600 gold in 2021. Yeah, the bullion banks, they, they're always downplaying the gold market. Uh, I made a video yesterday about uh, how you need to hold on to your gold. Uh, I, I think uh, we are at a really important juncture here, just uh, above, you know, well, we've been above the ninth. Uh, 1920 high from 2011 and I think we're about to break above that and once it does again it, it's off to the races it's going to be even more explosive than it was in uh, August uh, July August and September this year hi grow mechanic nice to see you here you just made it that's good Uh, Paul Game, Mario, now you're slowly getting into crypto. Have you heard of domain crypto addresses for receiving crypto funds? Um, well, in my, uh, I mean, I've had my, uh, in the description of my videos, uh, I've had it for years uh, where you can support the channel and there are crypto addresses there. So I have received crypto funds for, for years from people. You just need to look below. <laughs> I try not to keep asking people for uh, support. Uh, you know, I, I, maybe uh, I should do it more often, but I do have uh, Bitcoin addresses and other crypto addresses in the, in the description of every video. And uh, actually I've been involved in crypto since 2013, so but uh, as I said, I prefer precious metals. Uh, yeah, Andy from Devon, I recently found that cash type held with a broker in the UK SIP pension is only guaranteed uh, for 85,000. Well, yeah, because they, they, you know, your SIP uh, broker, uh, 
would uh, put the money with the bank. So that's the, the limit with the bank. <laughs> so the thing to, to do there, I guess, is not to leave it in cash, buy, uh, buy your shares in, in your uh, SIP. Yeah. So you got to be careful about that, that it doesn't get above 85. Jason Harris, what's the best way to avoid paying capital gains tax? The government paying people for an entire year furlough more than me when I still have to attend a minimum wage. I want to opt out. Uh, capital gains tax. I think uh, there's a lot of talk that they're going to change that. They, they, they say that they're going to make it more, uh, make it easier, but they're going to raise, they're going to cut probably the threshold. Uh, for precious metals, I know that uh, if you hold coins of the realm in the UK, there is no capital gains tax. So if you were to buy 20,000 pounds worth of sovereigns or Britann silver Britannias, and they tripled and you sold them, there's no tax because they're considered legal tender. So no capital gains tax there. Uh, Mr. Guppy, when you're taking crypto, are you selling to get gold or silver? Uh, well, you know, I do have uh, some crypto income from uh, DTube, uh, Hive, from Library. And what I do with those, I, I, a lot of times when I, I've got accumulated a few of those coins and they're doing well, uh, I sell them for uh, Bitcoin. But it's not enough really to... Sometimes I buy a bit of silver with it, but usually I just uh, transfer it to a uh, fiat currency just to spend as more as an income. I don't make enough to really uh, save that much. But lately I've been buying some silver coins. Uh, yeah, not bullion coins, but like more numismatic coins. Um, yeah, I, I found a really good uh, like num numismatic uh, person or company on eBay. That's what I do. Oh, <laughs> the other thing I forgot to tell you guys is that uh, it just shows how uh, the before I say that, let's uh, thank you, Joker, Joker Alpha, for the super chat. When a country goes into default, I hear the debt to GDP ratio is 130%. Is this true? Or is it higher? Well, really, uh, I think that number is a number where uh, um, a country, uh, it, it, the debt really slows down the economy and, and makes the economy very sclerotic. Italy has got about 130%. U.S. is near to that now. Japan is over 200%. The way a country default, let's say the U.S., is they keep printing the money and the currency becomes worthless. Uh, of course, there are countries that have almost defaulted or have defaulted, like Russia and Argentina. But that 130% doesn't mean uh, that a country has defaulted. It just means that that country is in trouble. So um, I think it was Mr. Guppy asking me, what, I do, what do I do with my crypto that I earn? Well, uh, back in April, <laughs> I didn't realize this, that Steemit had done a fork into Hive. And someone on the live stream told me in April, Mario, you've got 3,000 uh, Hive coins. And I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> and I proceeded uh, to find out, open my, my Hive uh, blog, which is connected to Steemit. And I sold 2,000 of my uh, Hive coins. They were around 90 cents, I think, at the time. And uh, what did I do with that? Well, I bought some Italian uh, fine wine, Tuscan wine, and uh, back in the end of April, and they're expensive. But I think th those kind kinds of uh, goods, like fine wine, fine watches, uh, they're not very liquid in terms of selling. Of course, wine is liquid, but uh, I've checked uh, from the people I bought, uh, the price has gone up about 20%. So it will cost. It would have cost me if I waited till now. It would have cost cost me twenty percent more to buy the uh, Italian wine that I bought. So, uh, yeah, I thought it would be nice to diversify from precious metals. 
But it, uh, I also bought uh, silver back in uh, March when silver dropped. The day it collapsed to like $11, I was able to get a hold of uh, some physical silver. Real estate. Well, real estate is always a good thing to have. Uh, yeah, you look at the very wealthy uh, families, uh, generational wealth, they have real estate. Yeah, it's good. But <laughs> nowadays, you look at the adverts sometimes on YouTube, uh, they're trying to uh, sell these programs about investing in real estate to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, <laughs> to people who are even renting or maybe have a big mortgage in their own primary residence. And they're pushing these people to go into real estate. I think real estate is a good store of wealth in the long term, but I think you need to do it <laughs> if you are financially in a good position, if you don't have any debt, if you've accumulated enough wealth, if you've paid off your primary residence, uh, then you can think about real estate for the long term. And uh, you have to try to maybe get a, a tax advisor may, because there are ways through trusts to leave uh, all your real estate or your properties to your heirs, but it's probably got to be done through a trust. I don't know much about that. Uh, and uh, as for the UK, I made a video about uh, about a week ago, maybe a little longer, about the uh, the goal, the house price, a nationwide house price, average house price to gold ratio. I think, uh, yeah, we've still got a long way to go in terms of where that ratio, when it will be a good time to switch out of gold, not all of it, but to, to buy into property. I, I still think it's too early. Andy Hughes, what are the similarities with US dollar and sterling that you've been from your time in Brazil? Any similar trends that some would overlook as a sign of collapse? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, in, in Brazil, uh, uh, the main uh, thing we measured uh, the local currency against was the dollar. So when the currency started moving lower versus the dollar very quickly, that was a bad sign. Food prices going up as well, I would say, is a bad sign. So that, that's why the central banks try to uh, keep a control of gold, but I think they're losing that control. So we measure here and, and in the U.S. really more versus gold. But even uh, the pound versus the dollar, for example, in 2007, one pound used to buy $2.11, and now it's about $1.30. And, and I think the pound is going to drop further versus the dollar. So there you go. But also things like, uh, yeah, prices of things going up, like food prices, uh, also the quality of goods as well. They get, quality gets worse. The shrinkflation as well, I would say. Uh, Doro Afrinesi, your, your opinion about Kinesis Mint. Never heard of Kinesis Mint. Sorry. Never. I've heard of Kinesis, but I didn't know they had a mint. Uh, anyway, I've told people that I'm not interested in Kinesis uh, because uh, they pay you to store your gold with them. And I think that that, that to me uh, puts up a lot of red flags because if you're going to store your gold with someone, uh, you should be paying them, <laughs> not the other way around. So I have a problem with that. I'd stick to uh, physical gold and silver and blint that I trust as well. Uh, global nonsense. It's not only uh, the food quality, but other goods as well, consumer goods, and uh, you know the quality of things. Uh, you know, clothes. I remember 20, 25 years ago, clothes that you bought at uh, Marks and Spencers, for example, 
uh, or John Lewis or Marx. They were much better quality than now. Uh, I bought jumpers uh, two less than two years ago uh, from uh, Mark Spencer's, and they've got holes in them already. I remember 20 years ago, if you bought jumpers or sweaters, the Americans call, they would last quite a while. So I, I, those kind of things, I would say. Uh, Mr. Andy, yeah, I, I've, I've seen the stories about the capital gains tax, uh, 12,300 to 4,000. That would be a big, uh, big uh, cut, yeah. But I, I heard that he's going to do something about it. I didn't realize it was going to be that much. Um, also, uh, for ISA's account, uh, he might cut the limits. I think it's 20000 a year that you can put tax-free in ISA's account, ISA accounts. He might cut that as well. I don't know. Probably will because ISA's are tax-free. It's going to be even worse for the economy, um, but the problem is they, they're between a, a rock and a hard place because they've uh, borrowed so much in the last, well, not only in the last nine months, but uh, forever they've been borrowing so much. Even before this crisis uh, be began, uh, we already had a lot of that. Uh, polit U.S. political divide. It will stay divided. It's not going to be good for the U.S. There you go. Rx for you, NYC. You really inform us with up-to-date info. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Jen West saying her Bosch dishwasher. Uh, yeah, and it's supposed to be good quality, German engineering, right? Uh, Jack Nichols, I agree. We need less civil service. We need uh, less bureaucracy. We need less regulations. We need to uh, less licenses. In the UK, you need a lot of licenses to do anything. And I don't understand that because the free market should regulate things. Uh, if you sell something, a, a, a consumer, someone a, a good or a service that isn't any good, let them decide. They'll go to someone else. So I think the free market is the best way to uh, regulate things. And there's just too much regulation, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but I think uh, like, uh, what's his name? Martin Armstrong said uh, with Greg Hunter in the latest interview, and I agree with him, uh, we're not witnessing the collapse of free market capitalism. We're witnessing the free market of the welfare socialist warfare state. And I think there's hope uh, if that, you know, if that system is collapsing, there is hope that something better will come out of it. And uh, that's why, I try to inform people that there is a way, uh, the way of the free market, the way of competition, the way of small government. We need government just to be there to protect uh, private property, the individual, the borders of the country, minimal government. Uh, I think uh, in the 19th century, when the UK had the British Empire <laughs> and ran uh, three quarters of the world, they had 5,000 civil servants. Now, I think uh, it's in the millions, the civil servants that this country has. Uh, Damien Wright, thank you for your super chat uh, donation, Damien. Yeah, Daniel says, I agree, UK is a massive welfare state. Uh, I, I think though people that uh, uh, are not awake uh, to the fact that this welfare state, uh, socialist, um, you know, bureaucratic state is going down the drain. They're going to be very, uh, they're going to be surprised in a bad way. I think a lot of the state pensions, uh, state, state pension, and you see already the NHS is not really going to provide any really good uh, standard of living. <laughs> I need to wait. 
I think another 11 years until I get my state pension. And I don't think that's going to be worth that much. So I don't think people should try to depend on that. They should try to uh, do other things, look after themselves. Uh, that's the other thing I, I said in the title of the video, uh, the uh, central banks, they want to uh, accumulate all the assets in the economy. Uh, and they would do that if the banks collapse because they'll take over all the bank's assets. And uh, a lot of the bank's assets are loans to mortgages, commercial property, uh, residential property. That would mean them owning you. And that's why even though you think uh, that will be, there's talk about debt jubilee, hyperinflation, destroying the currency, you need to be out of debt if you really want to be, uh, I think, sovereign. I know it's hard, but there are ways out of debt, I think, uh, especially if you haven't gotten into debt. If you can live without debt, then you can. Uh, I think uh, you need to stop listening to people uh, especially here in the UK, they tell young people, oh, get on the uh, property ladder or, you know, you have to own your home. But I would say save first and then think about it. Live within your means as well. I think, yeah, try to borrow as little as possible. Uh, Mr. Guppy, what, what's your own uh, current silver vote crypto ratio? I would say... <laughs> I don't keep track of those things, uh, but uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, I, I don't really have that much crypto. So, uh, yeah, it's more just gold and silver that I have. And my mining, mining shares as well in my ISA. Uh, Gary Evans, a uh, great reset. You will get UBI and own not own nothing. Well, the trick here, uh, Gary, is being able to actually still own something and not need the UBI, even though they give it to you. So that's that's what I'm trying to like get people to understand that if you look after your your finances, uh, you'll be able to actually take the UBI and buy more gold and silver. Uh, yeah. You should, you know, hopefully you won't be dependent on the UBI because I don't think it's going to be uh, very much. It's not, it's going to keep you just alive, I think, the UBI. That's right, Becca Harris. I agree with you about gold and silver. Yeah, there's very little, there's not many places out there where you, you can go uh, where it's free. It's uh, unfortunate. Uh, Christopher Conover, hope I pronounced that right. Thank you for your super chat. When will the major credit rating agencies, Moody's, Fitch, and S&P downgrade US government debt? Or uh, never will, if never, they're, they're good for. Well, they're not good for anything, really. They're just a pretend mechanism now. Uh, Standard & Poor's downgraded uh, the US uh, Treasury. Uh, back in 2011, that was just before gold ran up to 1900. They downgraded them from AAA to AA. And, uh, well, uh, they came and then the U.S. government, the, the Department of Defense sued S&P uh, for something completely different uh, about the uh, during the 08 crisis. But um, they used, you know, they went after them. And I think the CEO had to resign. So I think they're very mindful of what happened to Standard & Poor's back in 2011. So Moody's, Fitch, and s and I don't think they, they would dare to downgrade uh, the U.S. Uh, Treasury uh, government uh, paper again. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, they, <laughs> maybe if Trump wins and they're very political, they might do it. Who knows? But I, I don't think so. Well, maybe you watch the big short <laughs> and, um, you know, in that uh, movie, the lady from Standard & Poor's said, well, you know, if we, uh, if we don't give them a good rating, we lose the business. So it's become really political. They're not neutral. I don't know. Uh, so don't, 
Don't believe anything the uh, rating agent agencies tell you. They're usually behind the curve anyways. Uh, Monte says, first time listener, like your show. Thank you, Monte. Yeah, make sure if this is the first time, uh, think about subscribing as well to my channel. So <laughs> my subscriptions uh, are up to about 35 thousand just above 35,000 but it's been gradual I've been on for about five years so we want to see that pick up but I think it's better to have a lot of viewers uh, than uh, you know a lot of subscriptions I think both is good of course silver form from Nevada hi silver form nice to see you here uh, uh, theta Theta, yeah, I listened to, uh, I haven't listened to uh, Bix Weir that much, but he, he's talking about $600 silver by next month. I think that's a little bit too much, but um, I still think silver is going to do well in the next few years, but I, I don't think it's going to go to $600 next month. It would be nice, but just don't see it. Uh, Gary Katz, thank you for your super chat. Uh, big fan from Detroit. Episode of Real Vision, September uh, 22, 2020. Two gentlemen were discussing how QE was deflationary. This is very confusing. Can you please look into this? Thank you. Uh, yeah, Gary. Uh, so what the QE does is that the central banks, they create the reserves. Uh, and uh, with those reserves, they buy uh, government bonds. And by buying the government bonds, they lower um, interest rates, the yields on the bonds. So interest rates keep going lower. And, and I think what happens uh, when, when that happens is that uh, companies can finance projects, they can finance development. So companies are flush with capital so they can produce more, they can keep producing. And the more they produce, the more goods there are out there as well. The other thing that happens Lower interest rates helps you substitute um, workers, right? Labor for a technology because it's very cheap. You get easy credit so you can have more uh, research and development and you can uh, automate things and that creates unemployment. People lose their jobs or even if they don't lose their jobs, the jobs, uh, you know, there's, the wages go down. And I think that's why, that's why QE is, uh, how can I say, it creates a, a slow economic growth and they call it deflation. But I always try to tell people the, that deflation is a monetary phenomenon. Deflation is when you cut the money supply and it results in lower prices. Unfortunately, people nowadays use that term to signify a slow economy, uh, not very good conditions for workers. So I think that's what they mean. But a lot of this uh, QE money goes into stocks as well because uh, uh, cor big corporations, they borrow the money cheaply, they buy back their stocks. Uh, but I think it will eventually, this money will flow uh, into hard assets because uh, I think... Uh, Commodities are the lowest relative to the stock uh, market in 120 years. So eventually, I think that all that, a lot of that money will flow into commodities and that's gonna make consumer goods go up even more. And then people are gonna say, oh, there's inflation, but they are still creating inflation when they create, when they do QE. I think what it does, it, it, it makes the economy more sluggish but it helps uh, financialize the economy. It helps Wall Street. It helps the people around government. But it hurts uh, the middle class and the productive uh, part of the economy. Hopefully, that helps. Um, I think uh, the, the other thing about Michigan, I heard uh, from one of my viewers today, that the governor there wants to do uh, institute another lockdown uh, for Michigan. Boris is self-isolating again. Yeah, I mean, this is just a, a silly, silly thing, isn't it? Um, 
uh, I think you guys know how I feel about all this crisis, right? And I'm not going to touch upon it. I mean, if you really want to feel uh, know how I feel about it, go into my blog, uh, maneco64.net. I wrote about the World Economic Forum. There's an article there from June, the origins of the World Economic Forum. Check it out. <laughs> um, uh, global nonsense. Sunak is J.P. Morgan's eggplant. Yeah, Sunak's uh, father-in-law as well. He's one of the richest men in India. They're really into private equity as well. So when they bring down the whole uh, UK economy, his father-in-law is going to come in, swoop in like a vulture. And you had the ex-chancellor, uh, Savid Javid. He's still an MP. And guess who he's working for? He's working for JP Morgan, which is a, a complete conflict of interest. I think that's completely wrong. But people, you know, accept it. Uh, Mr. Guppy, I do. I do wear uh, pants. <laughs> uh, well, in in the UK, you call them trousers. Pants are underwear in the UK. I'm actually wearing my pajama uh, trousers today, flannel trousers. I was wearing uh, jeans earlier today, but I just wanted to get more comfortable. I'm wearing my tarts and pajama or pajama, pajama, <laughs> uh, trousers. Yeah, global nonsense, stealing from the UK taxpayers. Yeah, every time the central banks uh, do QE, they create these reserves, um, that's inflation. Uh, that's putting all the cost of bailing out the banks on the taxpayer. We don't feel it right away, but in the long term, uh, we're still going to feel it. Our children and grandchildren are going to feel it even more. Uh, because the local currency is going to be even more and more worthless. The economies are going to be sluggish because all, all that debt to GDP is going to be high. Uh, there's going to be big government. Uh, so that, that's why precious metals and cryptocurrency, if you want, is so important. Uh, and you shouldn't really think of them as a trade, uh, even though, of course, you can trade if you want. But think of them more as a long-term, uh, yeah, long-term insurance for not just for you, uh, but also for your children and grandchildren if you're uh, fortunate enough to uh, leave it to them. Uh, Mr. Andy from Devon, UK Bullion Duo, selling out quickly. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of the premiums are quite high these days. I guess, you know, the lockdown doesn't help either. Dilwyn Roberts, I'm Welsh. Hope you like the beer boys. <laughs> I'm going to be ignorant and say, who are the beer boys? <laughs> That just goes to show you how, how clueless I am. <laughs> oh, thank you, Becca Harris. Uh, yeah, I should get more thumbs up. I've only got 240. And we've got 510 people uh, viewing right now, which is good. That's the highest in the, in the last uh, month or so, I would say, of my live stream, live streams. Uh, Brady Girding, what do you think of Jim Rogers saying crypto is going bye-bye? Uh, I don't agree with him. I think cryptocurrency, you know, people need to really understand what cryptos are. Uh, you know, Bitcoin is the uh, genesis, is where cryptos were born. And Bitcoin, I think, is not really a great crypto. <laughs> and all, all the cryptos that came after Bitcoin are much better 
crypto, a Bitcoin is just like a, the Model T car. <laughs> and uh, all the newer cryptos have a lot more applications. And, uh, and I think a lot of the altcoins are going to come and go, uh, you know, <laughs> and if people, uh, dip, and a lot of these altcoins and cryptos, and they have applications. And if you're able to build a network where people want these applications and they're powered by their own uh, cryptocurrencies, then they will have some value. There will be demand in the market. So, but, so I think uh, a lot of these uh, people uh, like Jim Rogers, they haven't really looked into crypto. And I did. Because in 2017, uh, I did a lot uh, of videos about cryptos, all a lot of uh, informational videos uh, on on the ICOs. I got contacted a lot by crypto projects, so I, I know what what the cryptos and altcoins are. And I think the most important thing about them is that uh, for them to be successful, they just need a lot of uh, users, people that like it it's just like uh facebook for example uh you know the only thing is that facebook they built the network without their the currency so now they want to put a currency onto it but i think it's too late you got to start from 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 nothing and then build the community with uh the coin so i think there's a room for it i'm not saying it's going to take over uh, the world cryptocurrencies, but I think it's going to be a substitute. Uh, Mr. Guppy, I, I don't know. I, I bought copper here in the UK from Sharps Pixley, uh, a bullion dealer. I checked the other day; they don't have any more. I, I don't know where you can buy copper in, in the U, in the US. Check with the bullion dealers. Usually, sometimes they do have copper. You have to Google it. Yeah, pre-81 pennies, they are copper. That's right, Jim Diggs. I've got some here as well. I've got Billy is like Joe Biden, sleepy. <laughs> Billy is much nicer than Joe Biden. It's the only thing they have in common, really. Daniel Sass, what are your thoughts on gold? Well, <laughs> gold, uh, yeah, I think is the best store of value, uh, the best place right now to, to save your, uh, to put your savings in. Uh, silver as well, I think is good. Silver is more volatile. Gold is for bigger quantities, I would say. Now, gold is money, as JP Morgan said. Well, there you go. Uh, Ap Apmex has uh, copper. Andy Hughes, uh, governments may stomp crypto with regulations if it gets too scary for them. They'll say money laundering, terrorists, tax more. It's possible. You know, uh, I remember back in 2016, 2017, because I followed crypto a bit more uh, then. And there's always a lot of rumors and stories about the Chinese banning cryptos, uh, banning exchanges. Uh, there's always a lot of fear. So I would take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, EOS, do you still keep your EOS? Uh, Philip, I still have a little bit, but I, I, I sold out of most of my EOS and I, uh, months ago, and I went into mining stocks. I, I think EOS is a good crypto, but unfortunately, I don't think they're building a big community, uh, and that's why the price is languishing, I think, EOS. Uh, Brady Girding, um, will silver and gold get slammed again, like in March? Uh, you know, you can never say never about that, but I actually think we're still consolidating before the ne next leg up. 
So I think it's going to be very hard for them to slam gold and silver like they did in March. Vention Migtoes here. Hi, Vention. Hope you're well. Nice to see you. Uh, Jerome Bosman talking about Klaus Barbie, no private property by 2030. Uh, I actually, that was actually uh, someone who wrote an article and they published in the World Economic Forum. So they, they will say that they didn't say that, but uh, I think that's what they would want. Uh, it's a feudal system uh, that they want. It's basically modern fe feudalism where uh, there's a few people uh, that own everything and then you'll have the uh, privilege <laughs> to use their assets to survive and they'll give you a little bit of uh, UBI on the side. But uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we'll be able to protect ourselves <laughs> and not be dependent on the, uh, on the feudal lords of the 21st century. And I, I'm not even sure if they'll succeed with this plan. I think people are waking up to it. Uh, I remember already uh, last year and the year before, I started noticing the World Economic Forum uh, spewing all their uh, green agenda on Facebook. And uh, I saw a lot of my friends buying into it. And I try to keep telling them, these people are no good. So I, I hope they don't succeed. And I think people are waking up to them. Anton Spoji, if gold and silver mines are uh, nationalized, what will happen, happen to shareholders? I think the, the, the thing there is to uh, spread uh, your ownership to different, um, you know, countries. So because I don't think every country will nationalize them all at the same time. Uh, you know, the uh, United States didn't nationalize them in the 30s. Uh, so, but I guess you would probably get paid for your uh, shares, but it will, probably won't be a very good price. But, you know, I'm not gonna worry about that because, you know, the precious metals sec section, uh, you know, a mining, precious metals mining sector, commodity sector, they're still very undervalued uh, versus paper assets. So they could come and tax your, uh, you know, if Joe, Sleepy Joe Biden really takes over in January. He could, you know, raise capital gains tax. And, uh, you know, if you, you know, and your stock portfolio, you know, your profits could be like taken by, by that as well. He could raise it to even 50 or 60 percent. Who knows? So, yeah, there's a lot of things we can worry about, but it, it shouldn't stop us from doing the right thing, in my opinion. That, that's the only thing you can do. Uh, that's right, Vention Mito. Back in the 30s, uh, gold was money. It was the currency, and it isn't anymore. Uh, could banks call in your mortgage at any time? I don't think so. Be, you know, if they would, would have to break your contract, and they can't do that legally. Uh, the way they could do that is by raising uh, interest rates, though. If they uh, raise rates uh, and you can't service your mortgage, it's just as bad as doing that. But legally, they, you know, if you're able to pay your mortgage, they can't really call it. Uh, Joker Alpha, uh, you know, gold doesn't have to circulate in the gold standard. It's just a backing. It's a mechanism to control uh, the money supply, really. But I don't see why gold couldn't circulate either. It could circulate like through glint or through even a cryptocurrency. Um, don't see the problem. 
But then you could have silver. Silver is, uh, you know, silver coins are great. And I'm buying uh, quite a few of the old silver coins. I've got here uh, a quarter from Canada from 1964. I've got one Swiss franc from 1952. These are all silver. Uh, I've got a shilling from 1900. Uh, I've got one guilder from Holland from 1966. These are all silver. So we could, you know, we could buy, we could buy a coffee with a, a silver coin, you know, a Starbucks. Oh, thank you, uh, Keith, uh, and you're welcome. I'll take a few more question, uh, questions. <laughs> I'll take a few more questions, or I'll, I'll keep going a little longer today. Uh, we've got quite a few people here still. Uh, the elite. Uh, <laughs> who are the elite? Yeah, the Rothschilds are always brought up, and uh, I'm not saying they aren't elite, but I think uh, there are people <laughs> that we probably never heard of who are Rothschild's clients. They are the real elite. And I would say they are like the European families, like a aristocracy that's been around for hundreds of years. Some of them over a thousand years. They own a lot of land. And yeah, they're very powerful people. The Wallenbergs, yeah, the Wallenbergs, they own Sweden, I would say. <laughs> and they finance George Soros. Uh, they, they put up a lot of the money for the... Uh, for uh, George Soros fund, the, I uh, forgot the name of it, his hedge fund in the 60s. It was the Wallenbergs. And the Wallenbergs as well, uh, they made a, a fortune during World War II uh, because Sweden was neutral and sold to both sides. Mr. Virtue is back. Uh, Joker Alpha with Glint. Uh, the gold is in your name, and they it's held in a in a vault in a Zurich Airport, a Brinks vault, but it's not in their name. It, it's in your name, and you can also, uh, if you want, uh, you can also ask for delivery. They will deliver your gold. I think there's a minimum amount, maybe 10 grams. It might have, it might be less now. So yeah, they hold your gold. It's an allocated account. It's not unallocated. And they don't lend the gold. They just store it. Mr. Andy from Devon. Yeah, I have some of those uh, Weimar banknotes as well. Uh, Norman Liu says the Fed is a private bank owned by the Rothschilds. Uh, I don't think it's that simple. I would say the New York Fed, uh, the Rothschilds probably have some kind of ownership there uh, because the, I, I would say the Rothschilds, they own a lot of the big Wall Street banks. So every region, New York, uh, every Fed region, uh, let's say every Fed, uh, regional Fed, is owned by the commercial banks in that region. So you'd have to really find out who are the biggest shareholders of the biggest banks in all the, let's say, regional Fed banks. And I would say, yeah, the Rothschilds probably have a big shareholding uh, indirectly uh, in JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and Citibank. So yeah, indirectly they do. Uh, the Watcher, thank you for your super chat. He's got the InfoWars uh, thumbnail. <laughs> uh, Phil Frost, I do have, uh, uh, is it Jim Cooper? I have the, I have the, uh, to behold the pale horse. I do have that book. I have read it. It's a weird book. There's a lot of facts. Uh, I do have that book. Good 
behold the pale horse, yeah. Uh, Brady Gurdy, uh, sometimes I, I think the same thing about cryptos. It is, uh, I think, a divide, and divide. It's a divide mechanism. Yeah, it's keeping a lot of people uh, out of precious metals. Um, I'm, I'm sticking with precious metals mainly because uh, gold and silver have a, a track rec record of thousands of years of holy of being a good store of wealth, and uh, cryptos don't. Yeah, Bill Cooper. That's right. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, he. He was. He predicted uh, 9/11. Bill Cooper, and he was killed outside his house as well. A few months afterwards. Interesting guy. He did say a few things that I wasn't too sure about. Andy Hughes. I. I, I think the whole green movement is another bankster uh, scheme. Uh, you should. Uh, Look into uh, the unset. Is it George? Uh, hmm, I always forget that guy's name. But uh, yeah, the Rothschilds. Uh, it was Edmund de Rothschild in the six, in the seventies and eighties. Uh, they they were the ones to uh, get the UN into this uh, ecological green uh, climate change uh, system. This is just a a control mechanism to bring about global government because you, you've got the excuse that we've got to save the planet and you can't do it. Uh, you know, you have to have a central power to do it. Am I saying I'm against, uh, you know, keeping the environment clean? Uh, no, I'm not against that. But uh, I, I think this uh, green agenda, climate change, yeah, it, it, it's all a banker Rothschild created uh, thing. And he did that with uh, Maurice strong a guy who used to who actually worked for the un who was a canadian maurice strong um just trying to think of the name of the video i've done it many times before if you google um climb and if you go into my youtube channel under videos and you search a uh, george uh his name is george something but he did a video in the early 90s talking about this uh, but just go climb, you know, on my videos and search climate change agenda, and and you'll find it. Oh, yeah, yeah, John Turtle. That's what I I've been reading about this. Uh, the uh, you know the shuffle in Downing Street and the the new people they're bringing in, the kicking out Cummings. They say that they're very green. These people. That's worrying. I think because uh, basically it means it's going to destroy our economy. Uh, let's see. I'm going to find the name of this guy. It's bothering me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His name is George Hunt. Uh, so <laughs> that's right, Phil. What economy? Yeah, Google that and you find his video. And Phil, I think uh, they're destroying our, uh, you know, the current, uh, you know, uh, paradigm with this crisis in order to bring in this green agenda. It's going to be a, a, an agenda of control because they're going to mix in the, the health crisis with the climate uh, crisis and they're going to try to control us even more. Comrades still waiting for gold explosion. Well, you know, 
the video I made yesterday about gold, I said that, you know, two years ago, I said, hold on to your gold. It was at $1,300. And then uh, beginning of this year, it was at six, 600, 1600. So it took like almost two years to move 300. But in about five months this year, we moved from 1600 to 2100 almost. So it's accelerating. I think we're just consolidating right now. You need to be patient, as I said. Um, if you're not patient, then you know you shouldn't really probably be involved in gold because it's a long-term thing. Yeah, gold is money, Om Omro, like you said, or insurance as well. It's an insurance policy with no counterparty risk because <laughs> a lot of insurance policies when you want to like uh, claim the the policy, they will you know the insurance insurance company will try to uh, uh, not pay you. But gold all gold and silver always pay you. They're even better than insurance, I would say. Uh, Johnny O C, what do you think of David Attenborough? Well, I, I think he's a an agent of all these people. He should you know he's a political political guy. He's not a real, real scientist. <laughs> I really don't like him, <laughs> David Attenborough. I haven't looked at his document, but he's into all the uh, climate thing as well. Uh, M. Mac, I think uh, it doesn't really matter if it's Sleepy Joe or, or Donald Trump. Uh, precious metals are you know, the dollar is going to go down. They, they have to keep uh, inflating uh, the system. Inflating, you know, with paper money. And that usually means it's the uh, simple law of supply and demand. The more you inflate uh, the system with debt, which is the fiat currency, the more uh, other things that don't... Uh, inflate as quickly will become worth law of supply and demand. Uh, Brexit, yeah, it looks like uh, the negotiations are gonna be extended again, so it's not going well. But, you know, I, I'd rather, uh, because I think Brexit was a good thing because uh, it's one less layer of government from, from Brussels. But look at where we're now. <laughs> we're having the government tell us uh, that we can't go out and we can't do anything but go out and buy food. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd rather go back to before Brexit and uh, the world back to normal, <laughs> really. Yeah, Dale, Dale D. Morgan, that's good. That's a good uh, way to describe it. A psyop wrapped in beautiful pictures. That's right. That's what I think about David Attenborough. I think I saw a poster of him the, a few weeks ago. I was walking in town uh, for some kind of program. He had a lot of makeup on. <laughs> I think he's getting old. Venture Mikto, he, I, I know Venture Mikto, I've known him for years. And, uh, you know, uh, it's his call. He, he prefers uh, Bitcoin and it's done, it's done well for him. And, and I'm not going to argue with him. I would probably be the other way around. I, I'm probably the other way around. Um, you know, I, I'm like 97% gold and silver and 3% uh, cryptos. Uh, Pino Kunschner, I'm not going to give you numbers, <laughs> you know, I'm just, but yeah, I'm not going to talk about my portfolio, but uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't hold too many, uh, too much fiat currency. 
So, yeah. There you go. And why don't I hold fiat currency? I mean, many of you know, well, because fiat currencies are being inflated. The more the central banks uh, print uh, or create reserves to, you know, QE, and the more that that goes up, uh, the more they're going to become worthless because we are in a fiat currency system. Uh, the currency, it, the other side of the, the currency is the flip side of the debt. The only way they can uh, put money into the system is by creating debt. And that's why the system is flawed. And the system is, I think, uh, people are starting to lose faith and confidence in it. And when that happens, uh, the fiat currencies become worth less and less. And uh, if you have precious metals, they will always uh, have some value. You won't be uh, stuck with all these worthless banknotes or whatever. All right. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, take a couple more, uh, well, a few more questions and then we'll call it a night. We've been going on for almost an hour and 20 minutes. Still got 480 people. Yeah, finance and economics. That's, uh, thank you for stating that about the system. Yeah, I think you need to be outside the system as much as possible. I guess I am in the system by having my mining, mining stocks right now, but I'm willing to risk what I've got in there. It, it wouldn't uh, break the bank, so to speak. But uh, there you go. Uh, Magic Torch premium bonds. Uh, no, I don't think they have any advantage of our savings accounts uh, because if there is a reset and they bring out a new currency, uh, you know, the, the premium bonds are denominated in, in, in pounds. So I don't think they would have any um, advantage. I would rather hold uh, gold and silver than premium bonds, really. A GeoFit, do a video on the families that rule the world. Thank you for informative videos. Uh, Brady Girding, married. Do you think Melinda Gates <laughs> as a? <laughs> well, I don't know. She's not the uh, most beautiful woman, I would say. But um, there you go. Uh, I would say Michael. Uh, what's his Michael Obama might has a better chance. <laughs> I don't like Bill Knight, uh, Brady Girding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, time for bed. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for the uh, support. Thanks for participating in the chat, in the live stream. And I'll talk to you later. Have a great rest of the, the, the weekend. And if you're in Australia or Japan, have a great uh, start to your Monday. <laughs>